Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a certified galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. In today's video, we will be exploring together, diving deep into the mysteries and the magic of the upcoming Leo New Moon on August 4th, 2024. We will be exploring the galactic astrology of this upcoming lunation. We will be looking at some of the medical significations, the fact that this new moon is aligned with one of our dwarf planets, Varuna, and exploring a little bit about Varuna and Varuna symbolism. And we will also be looking at mini readings for each of the 12 signs. So the mini readings will be time stamped. And then after you watch for your sun, moon, and rising, definitely check out the end because I pulled two cards from this very magical herbal astrology pocket oracle. And I'm so grateful for you being here, tuning in, watching this video. Let me know in the comments what resonates, what parts you like, what parts could be improved. I Every video, my intention is to be of service and to share something that's valuable, helpful, informative, and hopefully just you know, good energy for the duration of the video that lifts up your spirits. All right, just a couple announcements before we dive into our material. On July 27th, I am teaching a class called Astrology Basics with Reiki Befriend the Planets. You can learn more about this class on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. And if you're watching this video after July 27th, I am teaching this is in a series. So one of these astrology basics classes happens every month. And in each month, it's on a new aspect of very basic foundational astrology, what you need to know so that you can make sense of astrology, read your natal chart and also develop your intuition with astrology and use Reiki to heal the more challenging parts of your astrology chart and to help you come into relationship with astrology experientially in a very embodied way, very physical way where you feel very connected to your chart and to the planets, the zodiac signs and every different dimension of astrology that we explore together. So that interests you definitely learn more about the class. I did a video on the class as well. All the details are on my website. I would love to have you in class. Classes are always just such an amazing community of people. So if you want to be amongst high vibe souls, definitely check out the class. Speaking of high vibe community, every month I host a new moon distant Reiki share and the upcoming distant Reiki share will be on August 4th. So on the day of the new moon, 8 a.m. Hawaii time, all the details on my website and you can RSVP for free so that you get the email with the link and you're all set up to come to the Reiki share and it's okay if you have to come late or leave early, come be a part of it. And again, it's just always an amazing, supportive, super high vibe community of many of whom are also Reiki practitioners, but don't feel like you have to already be a Reiki practitioner to come, just come and receive some healing, some empowerment. And I also talk about astrology of what's coming up next in the next two weeks following the new moon into the full moon. So I would love to have you there. Okay, Leo new moon. This new moon is occurring in the zodiac sign of Leo at 12 degrees, 33 minutes. It is exact at 1 12 a.m. Hawaii time 
on August 4th. So convert that into your time zone if you want to know when it is for you exactly. We have at the bottom of the chart, you can see I have our arrow here showing the sun and the moon conjunct together in the zodiac sign of Leo. And up here we have the glyph of the sun, the glyph of Leo. So you can start memorizing these things and understand what's going on when you see a chart like this. So it actually is meaningful. In medical astrology, Leo rules the heart, the upper back, the spinal cord, and the sheaths of the spinal cord, as well as the gallbladder with Virgo and Capricorn zodiac signs. So these are the places in your body to pay attention to over the course of Leo season, so solar Leo season when the sun is moving through Leo starting around July 23rd, but also the lunar cycle that starts with Leo that begins with this new moon, August 4th. So these areas of the body definitely take care, take care, take care, tune in. How does your heart feel? This is a wonderful time to listen to the wisdom of your heart and the multidimensional connectedness, knowledge, information, attunement, guidance, direction, clarity, passion. Leo is the sign of the inner child here. So what kind of heart healing needs to happen on all levels, of course, from physically, if you have some kind of physical issue and you're needing to support your heart physically, but also on that more metaphysical level as well. Are there maybe some guidances percolating coming from your heart? And this is a wonderful time to really tune into what does your heart need? And Maybe you have some ideas about this, and maybe this is something that you can become aware of over the course of Leo season and the moon cycle. Perhaps you want to plant the seed of intention around one of your heart's desires and see it manifest and grow over the course of the lunar cycle and over the course of the longer lunar cycle beyond just the 28 days of this particular lunar cycle. So also tending to the spinal cord, its sheaths, the spine, definitely the gallbladder as well. We've had so much Uranian activation. And so any way you can support your spine and your body, definitely very helpful to tune in and support yourself however you're guided to do that. So the sun is in rulership in the sign of Leo. There are no planets that are exalted in Leo because the sun is dominant here. The sun is the star of the show. It's the star of our solar system, of course. So Sun and Leo, very, very natural placement. Leo energy is playful and joyful and filled with life force energy, filled with creative energy. It's the zodiac sign that is linked to the middle of summer. So the peak of the heat and the abundance, the plentitude, the richness, the harvest, the, the joy of just so many possibilities, so many opportunities, so much to appreciate and be grateful for and play with and delight in. And really, this is very powerful solar energy. So light codes coming from the sun positive radiation coming from the sun. And I don't mean that in a technical way. I mean that in a positive cosmic rays, cosmic rays that are meant to help us evolve. Definitely spending time in the sun is 
recommended here, but not too much so that you overheat or anything like that. And this could be, if you're really sensitive to the sun, appreciating the sun in meditation and connecting to the energy of the sun, again, in ways that feel safe and responsible to you. Leo zodiac sign is fixed fire. So there is that passion, that creativity, that ignited energy, that sense of inspiration and let's just perform and delighting and basking in the glory of yourself. This is a moment to celebrate yourself. Tune into your authentic self, your sovereign self too. Leo is an incredibly sovereign sign. And at the new moon, perhaps this is initiating a new cycle of what sovereignty means to you. And this is inherent within the zodiac sign of Leo, but it's also inherent in part of Varuna symbolism here, which we will talk about. The fixed energy is that of maintaining, sustaining, enduring, persistence, whereas the cardinal signs are about initiating the new, starting afresh, diving into something. The fixed energy is there to help us really take the day-to-day -day action steps, be consistent, be disciplined, make it happen in a more long-term, sustainable way so that it's not just talk and like start something and then abandon it. It's like dig in and let's do the work. And Leo doesn't tend to like work, but will do work if it if it's fun. It feels fun and joyful and playful here and delights the creative spirit. This new moon is conjunct the dwarf planet Varuna, and this is a dwarf planet that is beyond the orbit of Pluto. It is a 283 year orbit, and you can find this in your chart. So I used astro.com to draw this inner chart. So you can go to astro.com and extended chart selection and scroll to the end where it lets you pick additional objects and where you see it's the left-hand side of the screen. If you're on a desktop, you can go there, look at additional objects. That's where like Part of Fortune is and Chiron and Ceres. And if you keep scrolling down, you will see Varuna there. And you can just click Varuna and you can see where Varuna is in your chart natally. So you can know that bit of information about yourself. So what is Varuna? Well, I took a wonderful class on Varuna in Dwarf Planet University a couple years ago, and it was early last year, I believe, or maybe end of 2022, when I was really diving into the energy of Varuna more intuitively. And I am just going to read to you some of the notes and significations that I came up with and also some of what I learned in the class about Varuna. So when I searched for my Varuna note, the first thing I found on my phone was this, empowers us with disciplined effort to achieve what the soul desires, to achieve and to cultivate the qualities of being that the soul desires so we may become the masters of our energy in this lifetime. And this is a little bit about the meaning of Varuna that I learned in one of Alan Clay's classes, which I highly recommend. Alan also has a book on all the dwarf planets. So Varuna is God of the waters. He was God of even more than that, the rivers and streams and the atmosphere, but he was demoted to just God of the oceans after there was a bit of a political struggle 
involving different different factions and also his brother and where he chose to be peaceful and see the bigger picture rather than engage in battle. And as a result, his brother actually stepped into this battle, defeated the enemy. And it was at that time that Indra became the god of the river and the atmosphere. And then Varuna then was only the god of the oceans, which that's still amazing, obviously, but shows Varuna's inherently peaceful nature. And also that Varuna is about seeing the bigger picture, the divine order of events, and knowing that sometimes the correct choice is not to take action. And that Sometimes when that is the correct choice and that is the choice that is selected, that there are consequences, but at the end of the day, there is that sense of integrity with being aligned with one's beliefs and thoughts and actions and truth. So it's a very, very integrity oriented energy. Alan also teaches that Varuna is the higher octave of the planet Saturn. And like Saturn, Varuna can place restrictions on us if we're not being true to ourselves or honest with others. But these dissipate when we forgive and align with spirit. He teaches us that we are dependent ultimately on both the heart and the fire of soul. He enables our immortality through the notability we achieve as we claim our sovereignty, enabling our deeds to live on in the collective consciousness. Now, from a galactic astrology point of view, I find it very interesting that when Varuna was discovered in the early 2000s, you can look at the discovery date and discovery birth chart of any planet or celestial object. And in Varuna's discovery birth chart, Varuna was at 11 degrees cancer. And our galactic astrology enthusiasts will know that that degree of cancer is the zodiac degree for Sirius A star. So Varuna, as a messenger of this Syrian soul wisdom and evolved Syrian timelines, knowing when to interfere, knowing when not to interfere as well. This was a very important lesson for our Syrian forefathers and star families that they learned how to be involved on the earth and how to assist humanity, but also not interfere with the evolutionary trajectory of planet earth. Varuna is also known as an all-seeing, all-knowing guide. So this is something I wrote about that, something that came through. Varuna awakens the aspect of yourself that is all-seeing, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present, and completely, wholly, purely divine. The part of you that sees all, knows all, and clearly aligns with the divine light of truth in all your perceptions, thoughts, feelings, communications, actions, and qualities of embodiment. You are sovereign, you are free, and you contribute to the highest possible frequency of sovereignty and freedom. Varuna activates, opens, and deepens your perception of the sovereign divinity within you, all-seeing, all-knowing, all-present, and all-powerful for the highest good of all. And there's a lot more that I channeled in relation to Varuna that I'm not going to share now because it would be an hour just on Varuna. But I will say one other 
facet of Varuna that I find really interesting is what Alan Clay links Varuna to sovereignty, as we've been talking about, but also that notability, whereas Saturn is like where we are on a karmic mission in this lifetime that's grounded, that's practical, that seeks to make an impact. Varuna, you can look at, is Varuna in your natal chart conjunct a planet or a point and what house it's in? Where will you be notable? Where will you be known as someone who does that thing or that activity or embodies that quality of being? in a really skillful way. So there is a sense of notability here in this new moon. What does this mean for you in the context of the new moon? You could be coming aware of your heart's desires and also what part of you is really notable. What part of you do you feel like you are known for or a part of your life that really highlights as a sense of strength and your power, essentially. And definitely, you know, in the day prior to the new moon and on the new moon with the conjunction to Varuna, this clairvoyance, this like seeing beyond dimensions and worlds, definitely the Syrian energy being possible and the enlightened Syrian energy being accessible at this time for higher guidance, but seeing between the realms and the veils, this is very much a part of the story here, activating more of your clear cognizance, your clear knowing, your clear thinking, and also your clairvoyance, your clear seeing. So really beautiful and powerful. There's another configuration I want to talk about here that is really interesting. There's a lot, and I'm not going to talk about all of it, but I'll just mention this. So I, you know, I'm having a good time when I'm drawing things into the chart. And that's what I did here. I actually made this PowerPoint in like three different iterations because the that's the way the astrology is. It just starts opening and opening and opening. And it's like, Alice goes down the rabbit hole into Wonderland and there's no end to it. This is a, a kaleidoscope of information here. So Sun, Moon, Varuna in sextile to Mars, Jupiter, and Gemini conjunct Regal star in Orion constellation. Mars, Jupiter here in Gemini in a sextile to the north node of the moon here in Aries, conjunct alpha reticulum star. And both of these energies, so the nodes are currently trining the new moon. This is very positive and helpful. All of these aspects are positive and helpful. The north node of the moon in Aries trine the great attractor, the great attractor trine our new moon. And then, of course, this Mars-Jupiter conjunct Regal is opposing the great attractor. And when we put all of that together, we get a kite because there's this large triangle, the grand trine, the smaller triangle here, and together they make a kite with Mars-Jupiter conjunct Regal at the top of the kite, you could say, and the great attractor being the tail of the kite here. The elements involved are fire, so this is a, is a grand trine in fire, and then we have this air with the Gemini energies here, and very, very interesting, very, very powerful, so many powerful harmonious flows of energy in terms of our soul growth for the future, the north node of the moon learning from our future selves, North Node conjunct Alpha Reticulum, and what kinds of changes we need to make to ensure we preserve the best of humanity and we evolve as a species in a very responsible way, that we take care of the earth, that we embody our sovereignty as human beings. 
And this Mars-Jupiter energy nearly conjunct, so they're not exactly conjunct. Yeah, that'll happen later on in August, but this is a working conjunction here with Mars and Jupiter. And so we have a whole lot of Gemini energy with Jupiter there, and then Mars really energizes whatever sign it's in. So this is air, this is communication, this is ideas, this is lots of things going on. This can be information overload as well, like, oh my gosh, too much, too much information, too much to do, I can't do any more. And that's where the grounding, soothing your nervous system, all of that self-care is really, really important taking a break from technology when you need to do that. Just being still, being quiet, going within is really, really important here. And we're being supported in doing that. The great attractor, finding that still point within that singularity within you and in the stillness, in the moments in between moments, that's where that powerful attraction energy can be there connecting to your power connecting to your authenticity connecting to your manifestation abilities connecting to higher knowledge and wisdom and how all the pieces fit together and seeing the divine order of all that is this could be a lot of clarity and it's like not just mental clarity, but like ignited mental clarity that compels action, that compels doing something, that compels actually accomplishing quite a lot in the direction. So changing one's mindset in certain ways that accommodate the actions and the life force and the creative direction that is opening up for you at this time and there is an abundance of protection energy as Jupiter is with Regal star and Orion so Jupiter is the great benefic it is a planet that is associated with protection inherently Jupiter is so large that it is part of the reason why objects can't just fly in willy-nilly and destroy our solar system it's literally physical protection within the solar system our planet of protection aligned with a star regal linked to protection regal is in the foot of orion warrior constellation and this star in ancient traditions was linked to being under the foot of the pharaoh, being under the civilizing influence of the pharaoh, and having protection of the pharaoh. And how very beautiful to have this protection, not only flowing through Jupiter, but also this star as well. And this star being linked to knowledge and learning and teaching and having this wisdom to share and having that really energized at this time as Jupiter makes conjunction with this star, bringing healing, bringing resolution to any kind of Orion trauma residue signatures that might be there and also unearthing the knowledge and wisdom from ancient Egyptian times from Atlantis and then also the wisdom from actual Orion constellation and Orion beings and we could be integrating that information more mentally but also in a very embodied way as Mars makes its conjunction with that star as Mars continues through the zodiac sign of Gemini as the month of August unfolds. So quite a you know, galactically refreshed Mars following the Mars-Uranus conjunction. And 
Iran is still really holding this this degree with Algol. I found it so interesting. My experience of that Mars Uranus conjunction with Algol was this resurgence of the wisdom and the knowledge of Mother Nature and connecting to the witchy part of myself that is connected to the earth and the plants and the elements and allowing myself to play and indulge and remember parts of that wisdom that was lost or I had disconnected from and feeling in touch and more in my wholeness with that. So Mars, whatever this kind of breakthrough may have been for you, Mars Uranus conjunction, coming into contact with Regal and coming into contact with Jupiter, this is wonderfully supportive. And at the time of the new moon, Mars is actually conjoining a Hyades star as well as Aldebaran here. And so this, this is a Mars that's getting like really upgraded and you may feel in your body, you are integrating some of this Hyadian energy that's very similar to Pleiadian energy. So if you feel really connected to Pleiadian beings at this time, they may also be Hyadian beings and that Hyadian DNA within your soul is waking up within your body is waking up as well as royal star aldebaran which how perfect is this is really linked to integrity as well as spiritual warriorship and archangel michael is the archangel associated with this particular royal star and again Michael is such an incredible protector. So our protection energy is very strong, very highlighted, and know that that is there and feel like you can lean into that and follow the guidance you are receiving and whatever that means for you in your path at this time, in this moment. It'll be different for everybody. So I also wanted to mention that Chiron stations retrograde on July 26. So that's prior to this new moon. But I want to mention it because I think this video will go up before then. So Chiron symbolism, very strong a week prior and then a week afterwards. And so what is Chiron about? Well, our healer, teacher, mentor, energy, our abandonment wounds as well. And this can be abandonment in terms of our childhood or relationships in this lifetime. But it can also be that feeling of abandonment, rejection by the divine mother, by mother nature, by mother and maternal figures but also from the galactic and star family and beings who were integral in human evolution, perhaps abandonment from different guides or feelings of separation and abandonment of one's home. Those kinds of things may be a part of the picture. And Chiron has this infusion that I've talked about in my last few videos by opposition to the divine feminine energy of Spica Star and Virgo constellation, also very connected to knowledge and learning and sacred feminine wisdom and gifts, and also opposing the Arcturus energy here in Boots constellation and how very wonderful to have these galactic beings and frequencies supporting us with any material, uncomfortable material that may have come up around this time that Chiron is stationing retrograde to know that we are supported. We're never alone. We're never abandoned. And in Aries zodiac sign, definitely do not abandon yourself. You can heal all your abandonment wounds 
by really not abandoning yourself, by being present to yourself, to your authentic self, your true nature, remembering who you are, knowing what you're all about, and being that and shining that light here, Leo. Also worth mentioning is that on the same day as the new moon, Mercury will station retrograde. So it's just happening several hours, looks like almost 10 hours after the new moon is exact. Mercury stations retrograde on August 4th at around four degrees of Virgo. So you may want to check, do you have any planets or points at four degrees Virgo? Make a note of that. And Mercury will go all the way back to 21 degrees of Leo and station direct on August 28th. So three weeks in August, our Mercury is retrograde. And this can be a powerful time of mental transformation and integration around the time of this new moon and appropriate ways things need to be reviewed and reanalyzed and order, divine order brought in and also divine child, inner child, creative expression brought in more you know, the analysis paralysis of Virgo here, overdoing it, overthinking it as Mercury retrogrades into Leo, that feels like it'll be a nice change in flavor so that if we feel like a bit overtired from all of this mental energy, we will have a bit of a break and Mercury is going to tune back into the heart frequency here before it goes direct and moves back into Virgo where Mercury and Virgo is not only in rulership, it's also said to be exalted in the sign of Virgo, but also in the sign of Aquarius here. So I want to mention those energies as well because the Mercury station will be a part of this new moon. And what's interesting too, Mercury is stationing retrograde opposite Royal Star Fomalhaut, so yet another Royal Star, as well as this beautiful shaman star, Denabadij. This is a beautiful pair of stars here. So Mercury stationing conjunct these stars or opposite these stars is also connecting us to Archangel Gabriel, divine messages, divine guidance, shamanic ability, shamanic energy, shamanic remembrance, heaven on earth, remembrance and codes from the beings of Cygnus who worked on creating a utopian type of environment within Cygnus. Cygnus is a swan in the sky, so it's one of our galactic birds, and Piscis austrinus is a fish here at the mouth of Aquarius constellation. It's receiving the waters pouring forth from Aquarius's urn. So, the water energy is also present here and important as Saturn and Neptune are still in the sign of Pisces and can be helpful here to definitely ground, to connect to the earth, to cleanse in water, to commune with the sun, commune with the plants, commune with your body commune with your spirit guides as well. There is so much divine support. It is really overflowing in abundance here at this new moon. So how blessed we are. So now we will go into our mini readings for each of the zodiac signs. You can listen to your rising sign first. If you know your rising sign, your ascendant sign as well as your sun and your moon. You can listen to all three. You can listen to just one or two. 
play around with it, see what resonates. Let me know in the comments what resonates if you like these mini readings. And that encourages me to continue because this becomes quite a large video and is quite a production. So definitely knowing that you like this helps me know that I should keep doing it and I will keep doing it, of course. So we will proceed into the mini readings. They are timestamped below. And definitely after you watch the mini readings you're interested in, go to the end where we look at the herbal astrology oracle cards because you're not going to want to miss those messages also. Okay, for Leo and Leo rising, Leo, happy birthday. I'm a Leo son, so I'm celebrating my birthday this month as well. So please open your heart and feel a big Reiki hug coming from me to you, my fellow Leo brothers and sisters of the light here. So much love to you. And this is your time. This is your season. This is your month. So definitely bask in the gentle radiance of all the good things like this beautiful lion is here in the photo. So for Leo Rising, this new moon is occurring in your first house of self. So this is a time of planting a new seed of intention and possibility in terms of your creativity, your soul expression, your physical body, your appearance, your identity, your personality, who you are, your beingness. This is an opportunity to really tune in to your essence and what you're all about and plant a seed of intention that's all about you, Leo. <laughs> that's what you get to do this month. And really beautiful support here coming through the Mars, Jupiter in your 11th house. So communing with your tribe, your soul family, learning, growing together, talking, discussing, exchanging ideas here. And this can help you really understand the soul growth areas that you are interested in as you expand your mind, you expand your horizons, you expand your knowledge and wisdom and sense of adventure here with the north node of the moon in the ninth house, Chiron also the stationing in your ninth house. This can be a profound healing in terms of your belief systems and clearing some of those belief systems out and contemplating what are some new healthy belief systems that need to be there to support your growing sense of self-worth and abundance and self-love and self-care as Mercury is beginning its retrograde in your second house and will integrate will integrate back into your first house, will retrograde back into your first house as well. So there's this sense of focus here on your resources, your money, your finances, your possessions, your value, what you value, what's most important to you, as well as your self-love, self-worth, self-esteem. So reevaluating that and integrating a healthier sense of self-worth and self-esteem, especially as Mercury conjoins Venus here at the last degree of Leo and they meet and Mercury will have actually gone direct over Venus and then retrograde and then will actually go direct and conjoin her again. So up-leveling that sense of self love and self-worth and your inherent value so that you can shine brightly in all the beautiful ways you are meant to shine, Leo. So very big happy birthday to you. Happy Leo season. Blessed new moon to you.
For Virgo and Virgo rising, this new moon is happening in your 12th house of withdrawal and solitude and going within the dream time, wonderful time to keep a dream journal, to really tune in, have the intention to remember your dreams, to pay attention to the signs and symbols that are flowing through your everyday life. At the time of this new moon, this would be a great time to be on a retreat, like a meditation retreat, or to do a shamanic journey, a Reiki journey, hypnotic regression, Reiki healing session, other kinds of healing work, meditation, quiet time. You might also just want to sleep more and rest up and really nourish yourself by rest and stillness. And all of this information and higher guidance can really come in for you and connect for you so that you know what to do, you know what actions to take, you know what changes to make, and you can do so in a skillful way by actually pausing and going within, doing some deep soul searching, some inner work, some integration work, some downtime, that that rest and rejuvenation can really help you as you move forward into your birthday season, which of course is next after Leo season. So any kind of career changes you've been contemplating, any kind of like really deep eighth house matters, so occult subjects, esoteric subjects, life, death, resurrection, rebirth, other people's energy, really deep union, so like very intimate relationships, this can be marriage, this can also be the house of death and inheritance and other people's money. So if there's been a lot of emphasis lately on those topics, there can be like this rest and recharge that is occurring at this time for you so that you can let go of any of those energies that like just do not belong that are holding you hostage in low self-worth or a lack of self-love that that can just whoosh, like purge out of you if you take some time and actually do a little bit of healing work around this a little bit of rest around this that there may even be guidance flowing through your dream time about the nature of of these issues and possible solutions and guidance about how this your relationship to money, your own self worth and self value is changing how your career may also be changing your public reputation changing and all in the service of waking you up and expanding your horizons here with Uranus in the ninth house. So Chiron stationing retrograde in your ninth, eighth house as well, that can bring up some of those healing issues. And again, letting those go and really getting support if you need support. If you need support, get support. And you can even ask in your meditation, your dream time, show me what kind of support would be helpful for me at this time. Is it a reading? Is it a session? Is it a massage? Is it more sleep? You know, if you're in this like overwhelm of like, I don't even know Mars, Jupiter and Gemini, like there's so, too many choices. Set it as an intention in your dream or in your meditation to receive that guidance and it can really come through here. Mercury retrograde is occurring in your first house here as well as your 12th house. So this may be this may be a time in August where you do find yourself spending a lot of time like contemplating your dreams and meditations and healing different issues that maybe you haven't been aware of, but it's time to go ahead and and delve into those and as you do so, you can emerge like really fresh at the end of August feeling like, wow, like clearer, lighter, brighter than ever end of August going into September and really like start the, the September, you know, 
autumn in the northern hemisphere, of course, spring in the southern hemisphere, like feeling like really fresh after this season of profound and deep healing and integration and kind of a reworking of your identity in a really profound way. So this is feeling like a really powerful, particularly powerful new moon for you, Virgo. So I really wish you all the best and big blessings to you. For Libra and Libra rising, this new moon is occurring in your 11th house of friends and communities and social networks and the interconnected nature of reality, the divine mind, seeing the ultra big picture and humanitarian issues as well, causes and justice and things, ideals that you are passionate about. So this can be a time to set an intention of, around any of those areas. So communities, a cause, a particular ideal that you want to embody and maybe even your soul tribe, you are setting a new intention around your soul tribe. What kind of tribe are you looking for? What kind of community are you looking for? What kinds of friendships are you looking for and really seeking? Like what would feel really meaningful for you and supportive to who you are becoming as you expand your mind and you let go of any belief systems that are no longer serving you and you seek alternative perspectives and really allow your horizons to expand and and feel that sense of limitlessness that is your true nature as you are being guided to focus on relationships. This could be a time when you are setting intentions around the new kinds of relationships you wish to make in terms of those wider networks and friendships. And these can be the people and also spirit guides I'm hearing too. What what spirit guides you're wanting to connect with, what galactic beings you're wanting to connect with. And these human spirit guides, star family, et cetera, groups of people can be the ones that are really helping you in your evolutionary trajectory at this time as you're navigating changing earth human relationships and really coming into a sense of balance in all your one-on-one -on -one relationships. You may be helping people too. You may find yourself doing a lot of client work or just helping people who are in your sphere. This can be like anybody you come across, including, of course, loved ones, but just like being present and showing up, being kind and friendly to all those who come across your path and empowering them. So Chiron is stationing retrograde in your seventh house of relationships as well. So there can be that detoxification of any kind of abandonment wounds that have been affecting your relationships at this time and that also trickle back all the way to childhood and other lifetimes as well. So healing through relationship, healing within relationship, becoming aware of certain relationship wounds that are there that are present. You also may be interacting with people who are looking to you for healing as well. That could also be a manifestation if you are operating as a light worker in some fashion, then you may find yourself engaging with those who are looking to you for help and support at this time. And you are certainly well equipped to be of service. So really, really lovely. The Mercury retrograde will be occurring in your 12th house and in your 11th house. So there may be a need to take some time and dissolve and be in journeys, be in meditation, get some extra rest. You could be receiving some interesting guidance in your dream time 
And again, having this emphasis in terms of your groups, your tribes, your communities, your your network and establishing new friendships and really integrating your deepest desires and deepest unconscious aspects and seeing those reflected in the people around you in really interesting and powerful ways that bring more love, more beauty, more fulfillment, more creativity, more of your soul's wholeness. So certainly finding time to go within, but also finding time to be out and connecting with others and and finding that balance is really going to be helpful at the time of the new moon and then moving into August as well. So I wish you a very beautiful new moon and month of August and all all the time space dimension many blessings to you Libra for Scorpio and Scorpio rising this new moon is occurring in your 10th house of career public reputation this can also be a house that's associated with mother or with father so you may be setting a new moon intention around one of those topics at this time. It could be a new goal you want to achieve, a new role you want to step into. This could be a goal at work, a goal with your career, a goal in terms of your family in establishing work and home balance. And what are you really looking to achieve? Like what's really important to you? What's motivating to you? How can you use the depth of knowledge of your soul and share it in some way that is meaningful and impactful? And as you do so, wow, this is really supported and valued. You may have just had some different contacts and abundance coming in, different feminine energies coming in with regard to your work and your career, your public reputation. So just knowing that you are supported to be of service and that that is really what you are probably already thinking about, changing your daily habits, your daily routines, organizing yourself, ordering your reality more and reflecting on the ways that you can be of practical service in this lifetime that brings you a sense of meaning and expansion. And if you are being invited to explore the esoteric, the occult, the mysteries of life and death and resurrection and the world of energy and spirituality and the depth of very intimate soul unions. This could be marriages. This can be relationships and partnerships that are very, very deep and committed. This could also be business. This could be spiritual business. This could be some kind of information or teaching-based business that is happening for you, that is expanding for you. This could also be that those topics are very highlighted at this time, other people's energy, other people's money, and finding balance in all of that, finding, remembering to find what what do you really need? What are you all about at the core of your being, your roots, your grounding, your your connection to the earth when this is feeling like, whoa, that's a lot. Chiron stations retrograde in your sixth house of work. So you could be engaged in a lot of healing work. This could be also that you've been having certain health challenges. And one of those health challenges may be drawing some attention from you. So the invitation here is to really take good care of yourself. If you are somebody who's healthy, being preventive, with your care, your daily self-care, and if you're somebody who's really struggling, to also ask for guidance on kind of the help and the support that would really benefit you at this time if you find yourself needing any kind of healing support. 
likewise, this can be you as the healer in your work and sharing your gifts and talents within the healing arts. And so there could be some attention brought to this area of your work, perhaps more clients coming in, more people looking to you for support, or maybe even just like needing a break and needing to pause for a moment so that you can work on your own healing needs at this time. So really listen in on that and see what's best for you. Mercury retrograde is going to be happening in your 11th house of community and networks and friends, acquaintances, ideals, humanitarian issues and causes that you're passionate about and retrograding also into your 10th house of your career and your public reputation. So this whole area of career is very, very highlighted and you may be reworking certain things. You could also be extremely productive with your job, with your career, with some of these projects that you have going on and really re retuning, refining and making them even better than ever so that as August and September and the months unfold, you can really share these projects with confidence and life force and clarity and knowing that the details were attended to and also that creative expression of your soul and spirit is shining through and the light of your inner child is there and the magic and the flow and the, the alchemical process of it all is really being honored also. So Happy and blessed new moon to you, Scorpio. I wish you all the best. For Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising, this new moon is occurring in your ninth house of metaphysics and travel, foreign lands, foreign people, expanding your horizons, higher education, higher mind. So you could be setting a new intention around one of these topics, you could be planning a trip, planning a course of study, getting yourself into the zone of wild and free and connecting to nature, connecting to multiple cultures, connecting to the galactic as well at this time. So all of these themes really highlighted as well as what kinds of new belief systems are you wanting to implement that better reflect your values, your creative expression, who you really are, what you bring to the table in relationships, how you offer others so much value, so much knowledge, so much wisdom, so much connection, so much the spark of your curiosity, the value of the spark of your curiosity, the value of the conversation, the value of the words that you share with others, the way you are pioneering in your creativity and what you can accomplish just by being yourself, by going it alone and doing it alone, you could actually accomplish and create quite a lot and be a bit of a, a maverick and a forerunner and just really going for it and breaking new ground and going into uncharted territory, which, you know, Sagittarius is certainly all about here. So the Chiron stationing retrograde is occurring in your fifth house of creativity of children as well, romance. So there may be healing in regards to your business, your entrepreneurship. Fifth house is a house pertaining to that. Healing your inner child. Ding, 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 ding. That sounds like very, very important here. Inner child energy, being healed, family of origin, childhood wounds and traumas being healed, perhaps coming up so that they can be healed. And also engaging with your creative power in a way that is very healing, healing for you, healing for others, healing for 
in terms of your career, your service, your public reputation. So this may be even a new a new healing offering that you are sharing with others, being of service to others as really like for you right now, where the gold is at is in your creative life force is in you taking calculated risks and just going for it and being a pioneer and saying yes to your creative power and the possibilities that are flowing to you and through you. The Mercury retrograde will be occurring in your 10th house of career and public reputation, as well as your 9th house of expanded horizons, foreign lands, long distance trips and travels, and your belief system. So there can be a sense of regrouping in terms of your career and public reputation, work things, and needing even to rework some belief systems so you're really in line with that success consciousness that is the truth of who you are and what you offer to the world. So there can be a reworking here. There can be an integration of all the changes, you know, all the big growths that's been happening in terms of your career, your business, your creativity, your children, as well as any kind of family changes that have been going on. The 10th house and 4th house are linked to mother and father. So integrating all that has changed, how you've changed, how even like how you've been seen, how you are seen and perceived is changed. And even how you've become more of a person you look up to. You know, how have you embodied more of your potential? And just kind of like owning that, understanding, okay, you might have to rewrite some of these belief systems to reflect actually how much you've grown. They need to be backtrack, recalibrate so that the the new operating system is in because you have changed. You are not who you were. You are who you are now. You're a powerful being of the light. You are larger than life, Sagittarius. So really supportive Mercury retrograde for that. Don't sweat it. If things come up, just laugh and play and know that Mercury retrograde can be a powerful time of integration, healing, and productivity. And Sag, I know you're optimistic, so I know you'll be on board with that. Many blessings and happy new moon to you, Sag. Much love. For Capricorn and Capricorn rising, this new moon is occurring in your eighth house of other people's energy, other people's money, debt, and big money, and death, and life, death, rebirth, ascension, resurrection, the mysteries of existence, all things spiritual, tantric union, very deep levels of intimacy and exploration, the esoteric, the occult. There's a lot here in the eighth house. So you may be setting an intention and it could be you're setting a new spiritual intention or you're setting an intention for your spiritual growth, something like that, or it could be having to do with one of those other categories and topics that I mentioned. So the eighth house really covers a lot of territory, infinite territory, if you will. So setting an intention there, and this could have to do with your daily schedule, your health routine, your practical service, the information you're taking in what your body needs, what your nervous system needs. There could be a lot of like frenetic energy here that just needs some grounding, that needs some stabilizing, that needs some earthing and rooting and being in your body and being still and really tuning into your intuition and your instincts that any health challenges that are coming up really tune into your instincts ground into the wisdom of mother nature and maybe it's that you're dealing with 
other people's health issues or other people's problems at this time, problems at home or issues at home, and really reflecting on what makes you feel at home, what makes you feel stable and grounded and supported and powerful. And as you give that to yourself, you can be of greater service to others. You can show up and be supportive and be empowered. This may be a time where you feel like, oh, you have a lot to do. A lot is going on. There's a lot of communication going on. And so just to know that when you need to stop, when you need to reflect, that your instincts, your gut brain can give you a lot of the answers and the clarities that you are requiring at this time. Chiron is stationing retrograde in your fourth house. So this can be really deep healing, ancestral healing, mother, father wound healing, childhood healing, inner child healing, any kind of healing having to do with the family. Some of that could be coming up so that it can be healed. Likewise, you may have a family member that needs help, that needs healing at this time. So it could be your own energy or somebody else's energy or somebody else who you love and care about needing healing that, of course, affecting your own energy as well. So just be really mindful and really gentle with that process as it unfolds. The Mercury retrograde will be occurring in your ninth house of foreign lands and foreign people and your belief systems and higher higher mind, higher education. And it will also be retrograding into your eighth house of all those topics already mentioned, the mysteries of life and death and the esoteric, other people's energy, other people's money. So you could be reworking some belief systems at this time, expanding your horizons and then actually going really deep within to a spiritual, transformative, alchemical process with it. And even thinking about Mercury as the psychopomp, the messenger between the realms of the living and the deceased, like the physical realm and the non-physical realm and being able to just go between the realms, no problem. And come back, there could be this sense of going in between the realms here with Mercury in the ninth and then retrograding into the eighth and then going back direct here. So just knowing that and receiving support if you need support, if you are already engaging in this kind of spiritual work, then you may quite enjoy it and you may feel very connected. You may want to learn mediumship skills at this time. You may want to learn how to commune with spirit guides at this time. It may be really supportive to develop skill in those areas, explore those areas. And you may just be feeling like really connected to the invisible realms, to your guides. And that kind of communication may be at a level that you haven't had previously where you're receiving those messages and you're able to understand them and and they are changing how you see yourself and how you see who you are and your roots and how you go about your daily life so there can be quite a lot of knowledge and wisdom and like soul power really coming through this new moon so i wish you all the best capricorn rising many blessings to you for Aquarius and Aquarius rising, this new moon is occurring in your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one relationships. This can be marriages, this can be romantic partners, this can be business partners, the clients you see, the students you teach, the people you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. This can be any and all one-on-one -on -one relationships. So setting an intention around what kind of relationships are you looking for? What do you desire in a partner? What do you desire in a friend? What do you desire in a client? What does the ideal version of each of those look like to you? What do you desire in an ideal 
business partner or collaborator or anybody that you want to spend time with reflecting on that. And this could be a time of really beginning new relationships in any of those categories of one-on-one relationships. So really positive, really fruitful. There could be a lot of communication, a lot of creative energy. There can be love and romance. This can be love and romance. This can be a new man, a new love interest. This can be a new spiritual teacher. This can be a lot is going on with your children. If you are somebody who has children, this can be a huge activation of your creative energy in a way that is mental, (laughs) in a way that is you know, fine motor coordination, maybe you're a musician, or maybe you are a skateboarder, or you're doing some kind of sport, some kind of activity, or you are otherwise expanding your creative life force energy. This can be maybe you're teaching something, you're creating a course, you're creating, you're writing, you're working on some kind of writing project here. So many possibilities here. Also with North Node in your third house, like communication is very, very highlighted. And interestingly, when Chiron stations retrograde, Chiron will be stationing retrograde in your third house of lower mind, lower education. It's also a house linked to social media, your local environment, your like emails, messages, DMs, all of that is contained within the third house day-to-day activities and your neighborhoods and your local community. So there can be healing coming up in any of any and all of those topics and areas. There can also be healing communications. Maybe you are sharing things on social media that are healing. Maybe you are teaching or taking a course that is healing or really finding support or healing in your community or offering that kind of support in your local community or online as well. So this Chiron energy, very, very present in your communication, also very present in terms of the thoughts that can support your increasing self-worth and the increasing manifestation of your own inner authority and self-directed guidance for the gifts and talents and what you really bring to the table and what you are sharing that is of value to other human beings right now on earth. So your self-love, your self-worth, all very highlighted here as well. The Mercury retrograde will be happening in your eighth house of life, death, resurrection, ascension, other people's money, other people's energy, inheritance, taxes, debts, big money, big power, soul consciousness, many things contained within this eighth house. So you may be learning about spiritual topics, teaching about spiritual topics, exploring mediumship, exploring, communicating with your spirit guides, those kinds of things. And then Mercury's retrograding as well into your seventh house of relationships. So there can be a lot of communication regarding your spiritual path, your spiritual growth, as well as in all manner of one-on-one relationships. So there can be an integration of how you've changed, how you've grown, and that really coming through in all manner of your relationships. Maybe there's some reworking of relationships and integration, again, of how you've grown and changed and who you are now and what you're all about and how you're transforming and that is affecting how you show up in relationships. So to hold space for those changes and really 
be gentle with yourself, be gentle with others. Don't be overly self-critical of yourself and others because you're all learning and growing together and finding ways to support each other where you're at now and being open to trying new things and trying solutions and and thinking about, well, what would bring more joy? What would bring more spaciousness? What would bring in more fun? What would my inner child advise me to do? And listening for some of those solutions, answers, and guidance. Many blessings and happy new moon to you, Aquarius. For Pisces and Pisces rising, this new moon is occurring in your sixth house of your daily routine, your health, health habits, daily habits, your work. This house also rules co-workers, aunts and uncles, the ways you are showing up in the world in your practical service. So, you could be setting a new moon intention in any one of these life areas and really beginning a new cycle of creative self-expression and seeing how your creativity can unfold and embellish all that you do and be a part of your daily life. You may have insights and clarity around how your inner child wishes to express in your day-to-day -day life as well. This energy is pairing well with this Mars, Jupiter, and Gemini in your fourth house. There may be a lot of activity at home. There could be lots of movement and discussion, conversations, and really coming into alignment with your self-love, self-worth, your needs, your self-care as well, your value and your finances, your resources, as second house will be where Chiron is stationing to go retrograde. So there may be some healing with regard to your self-worth, your value, your self-esteem, finances. What do you need at this time? What are your gifts and talents? Perhaps you've been coming aware of more of your gifts and talents and cultivating more of your skills and abilities and recognizing the ways that you are of service to others. There can be healing in terms of low self-worth and where you have been separated or abandoned in terms of your own needs, your own sovereignty, your own individuality, and your own sense of feeling like a consolidated whole human being who deserves a life of peace and abundance and being comfortable and feeling really clear about who you are. So some of this can be coming up to be healed. And of course, if you need support in this process, certainly reach out for support wherever you are guided to do so. The Mercury retrograde is occurring in your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one relationships. So this includes romantic partnerships, business partnerships, the clients you might work with, your friends, family, any kind of one-on-one -on -one relationship where you are relating to someone one on one, one at a time. So there can be rethinking some of your relationships, revising, integrating changes in your relationships, integrating changes in your own identity at home as well, and cultivating that sense of creative self-expression, your authenticity, your sovereignty, there may be adjustments in your daily schedule and integration that is taking place on a day-to-day -day basis to help you have a stronger foundation of health 
and wholeness and feeling like your cup is really full when you're meeting with all the various different people in your life, in your sphere. Mercury retrograde is an opportunity to definitely give yourself that self-care you need that you're looking for, going within, listening, listening to your inner child, carving out some time and space to do that so that you're not in analysis paralysis or just overly concerned with what others are needing, but you are able to tune into your deeper needs and do so on a regular basis on a daily basis. So I wish you a wonderful new moon, Pisces rising and Pisces. May this be beautiful in all of your six house matters in your daily life. May you start any new habits that you're wanting to start. That is definitely very supported at this new moon. Blessed new moon to you. For Aries and Aries rising, this new moon is occurring in your fifth astrological house of joy and fun and play, your inner child, romance, adventures, calculated risks that you may be taking, just having a really good time. So setting an intention to have more creative self-expression happening on the regular, setting aside the needs and obligations and what you feel like you should be doing and thinking about what does your heart want to do? What kind of play would feel really light and expansive? And it can be anything, you know, even thinking about what would your inner child want to do? What did you love doing when you were a kid? What made you smile and just feel so full of life and vitality and excitement? So tuning into that part of yourself and setting an intention so that you engage with that part of yourself and allow that part of yourself to express more clearly and more regularly. And this may require a change in mindset. This may require rethinking some things and expanding your perspective and really letting go of any ways your mind has been conditioned by childhood or by lower schooling, by any kind of thought forms that are just no longer serving your highest good, like you should be doing this or that, or, you know, that's not responsible, or your time would be better served in this adult activity or Whatever those thoughts may be, just letting those go and going for it. And you may find there are people who want to join you, conversations that can be really expansive and uplifting, and you may find energy to explore your local environment more, take some trips, take some adventures, see what's just right around you. You know, you don't have to go on some long journey adventure, but just see what's available to you. You may even find like you're just listening to things that make you laugh. You could be listening to comedy things or, you know, jokes and seeing funny things and just feeling connected to that sense of lightheartedness that is really needed and certainly very supportive for all the growth you have been doing with regard to your identity. And Chiron in Aries stationing retrograde is taking place in your first house. So I believe all of this lightness and fun and joy and play will help offset anything that Chiron is really bringing up in terms of your own healing journey that you've been going on really, really personally. And perhaps this has been a kind of initiation period where you have been initiated into your next level of healing and your next level of healing skills coming to the surface, your next level of skills in terms of teaching, of mentoring, of like what have you learned in your life and how are you sharing it? You could have a greater sense of clarity about that. And if you don't have clarity that this is a good time that those ideas can come through those invite that awareness invite that listening of 
well, what is it I really have learned? In what way am I a guiding light to others? Reflecting on how far you've come and how much you've grown, what you've been through, and how you are shining your light in your life and are a light for others. Mercury retrograde is occurring in your sixth house of day-to-day routines, nutrition, health habits, work, co-workers, aunts and uncles, and also taking place in this fifth house of joy, fun, play, romantic relationships, gambling, entrepreneurship as well. So you could be making changes or integrating, reflecting on things that have been going on in work and in those other areas I mentioned with your creativity, romance, play, lightheartedness. And this could have you taking taking trips or spending time in that creative energy, like letting go of any kind of critical, judgmental blocking you. Oh, I have to do this and this and this and duties and to-do lists and really sinking into like, what are those playful, lighthearted, creative thoughts and communications I want to engage in and find some buddies to have fun with or just go it solo and have some fun adventures on your own. Aries Rising, you can handle that, you know. You can be your own best company there, but chances are probably people will want to join you because you're a lot of fun to be around. So I wish you a really wonderful and joyful, fun, playful Leo new moon cycle, you know, whatever's coming throughout the month of August and beyond, like let this be one to set some intentions that your inner child is really excited about. Blessed new moon to you, Aries. For Taurus and Taurus rising, this new moon is occurring in your fourth house of home, family, your roots, your ancestry. So you could be setting a new intention, a new moon intention with regard to one of those topics. This is also having to do with your mother and father. Fourth house can be mother or father. You know, you can really feel into that. Maybe you can become aware in this moon cycle if your fourth house is more connected to one parent or the other because astrologers can connect those to both fourth and 10th house. So reflect on that perhaps. Perhaps something new, new beginnings are happening with your home. Perhaps you're moving home. Perhaps there is new energy in your home. You're freshening things up. You're making renovations. You're changing the furniture around. You're opening those windows, letting the fresh air in. And perhaps you're you're being creative at home here too with all of this beautiful Leo energy. With Mars and Jupiter in your second house, resources are a focus, are abundant potentially with Jupiter there. Mars there energizing. Perhaps you are thinking about how you can manage your resources more responsibly and you know, what are you spending too much on? What do you need to cut back a bit? And maybe this could even be like impulsive spending too. So you might want to watch that with Mars, Jupiter, like too much of a good thing. So being mindful of that, but really, I mean, a higher frequency manifestation or more spiritual manifestation is speaking about like really coming into that union and space of love and acceptance with your inner divine masculine energy and you could be getting quite a lot done here from a really centered space of your own worth. So you could be cutting and letting go of any negative beliefs about your value, your worth, self-esteem. It's time to let those go so that they are not a part of your reality. Likewise, there could be a man in your life that is supportive of you at this time, a teacher in your life that is supportive of you at this time, or that could also be you really stepping into more of your masculine energy in a powerful way, stepping into your own inner guru energy in a powerful way. So, There's been an emphasis here on going within the stillness, the withdrawal, meditation, shamanic journeying, Reiki journeying, any way you like to go within, 
taking note of your dreams, divine guidance coming in through your dream time. And as you do so, you have this like attraction that can go on in terms of your wealth at this time, in terms of your spiritual mastery, your embodied spiritual mastery, your propensity towards peacefulness, as well as navigating the unseen realms, the invisible realms, spirit guides, and the galactic and beyond here, that that could come into focus in some way. Chiron stationing retrograde occurring in your 12th house. So once again, underscoring that that imperative of going within, stopping, pausing, you may need extra sleep, you may need extra rest, you may need extra alone time, solitude, quietude. And if that's the case, then by all means, give yourself the gift of those experiences. Listen to your body, listen to your spirit, listen to your soul deeply for what it is you need and messages, guidance, healing can really occur in the deep, deep dream time, but also very deep wounding, subconscious, unconscious wounding can be arising in the dream time, also in your meditations and just coming into more awareness in your daily life. So if that is the case, please support yourself however you feel guided to do so and know that whatever's coming up for you, you can handle. There are solutions and you can really heal at a very deep level at this time. Mercury retrograde is occurring in your fifth house of creativity, children, romantic relationships, entrepreneurship, joy, fun, play, all the very fun performance, creative expressions here of the fifth house. So there can be a review, reflection, integration with regard to those life areas, as well as home, family, ancestry, roots, mother, father, your lineage. That is the areas of your chart where Mercury is providing you with an opportunity to integrate, perhaps even become aware of how family patterns have manifested in your business or in your romantic relationships, perhaps becoming aware of certain family patterns, it's time to let those go, or even establishing new healthy family patterns and what seeds of wisdom can you bring into your creative expression also. So children, home and family, very highlighted with healing support, with integration, with also reflection on how much you've grown since your childhood. And how are you being a good parent to yourself? How are you a good parent to your children if you have children at any age, but also that parent-child relationship within? Are you needing to support you in any way that you're not currently supporting yourself and feeling connected and supported to the earth. This could be a time where you're feeling connected to your galactic ancestry as well, roots beyond the earth and fathoming that as you go into these deep meditative and spiritual states of consciousness. So know that that's possible too, that that's available and that could even spark quite a lot of creative life force energy for you and give you a clear sense of who you are, your magnetism, your power, the beauty and glory of you. Lesson new moon to you, Taurus rising and Taurus. Gemini and Gemini rising, this new moon is occurring in your third house of lower mind, short trips, your local environment, your communication, your mental environment, your thinking. So you could be setting a new moon intention around what do you want your mental space to be like? What do you want 
your social media space to be like two third house can be linked to your social media. Maybe you're wanting to start like a new social media campaign or a new writing project, or you have the intention to explore your local environment more or to rework your communication in some way. Maybe this is like refining what kind of information you're taking in and maybe even thinking about creative ways you can share with others and inspire others here. So many different possibilities. I'm curious what you come up with. This is also like just getting curious, getting curious and letting your inner child be curious and letting that spark of creativity guide you over the course of Leo season. So lots of energy here in your first house, your identity feeling larger than life feeling empowered feeling that masculine drive that motivation you could be moving your body more to when the energy feels overwhelming when you feel overstimulated and maybe you can't rest you're like too activated you're a little electrically fried out here Moving your body can really help manage this energy. And that's something I probably should have said for everybody with Mars, Jupiter, and Gemini. This is great for going on long walks. This is like absolutely great for long walks. You know, you can listen to a podcast or something that's interesting, or maybe you're wanting to just be in silence, but just moving your body when you're feeling like your nervous system is just overactivated is a wonderful way to work with this energy and certainly to commune with soul family, to be committed to those higher causes, to be talking to friends that lift you up and make you feel good and inspire you and ignite your curiosity and your enthusiasm for life and also resonate on a similar frequency as you do. Chiron and Aries will be stationing retrograde in your 11th house. So this could be healing in groups of people, healing with groups of people, healing you're maybe facilitating healing for a group of people at this time that could be highlighted. This could also highlight wounds and traumas and abandonment healing specifically with that, that element of the galactic abandonment that I mentioned in the general reading, the separation from the stars and star family and our family beyond. This could also bring up this lifetime or other lifetime wounds regarding friendships, communities, networks, even entire civilizations that you were a part of and some kind of loss or abandonment with that and anything that's coming up here, know that it can be healed now to reach out, get support if you need support, but that healing is possible and healing within the group is really possible. And any kind of group healing work you're engaging in is really rippling out far beyond and is so deeply supported by the galactic energies as well. And in the end is part of the medicine that you are receiving and offering in this lifetime, especially right now. The Mercury retrograde will be occurring in your fourth astrological house and third. So reviewing and integrating topics with regard to home, family, roots, ancestry, as well as your communications, your local environment, your mindset, your mental environment as well, your cognitive environment, your learning. Perhaps this is a course you are finishing, and perhaps this could bring in communication also about those various areas of your life. And there, this also feels like an emphasis for you in particular, Gemini. So you are a Mercury ruled sign. So 
the mercury retrograde is is always something that's going to be like pretty strong for you because you have a placement in a mercury ruled sign so just knowing that about mercury retrograde that's not to say it's negative or positive it's just something that you may feel more than other people do you may be more sensitive and to observe it it's like what what opportunities and higher frequencies are possible in mercury retrogrades for you since you are intimately connected to planet mercury so this is a great time to like come into a relationship with mercury you know that's what's obvious and channeling through and you have you could have more clues about your ancestry and about your home, whether that's home on earth, deep past within earth, and also deep past within the galactic roots and ancestry within other lifetimes and within other star systems and planetary systems. So this could be really, really profound, and you could have clearer communication with these beings and parts of yourself coming online and becoming more aware of those parts of you and the guidance that can be integrated and the medicine that can be integrated into your physical body and into your mindset as well so that you can live a healthier life and have clarity as you go forward the rest of this beautiful Leo new moon cycle. So I wish you a wonderful new moon, Gemini. For Cancer and Cancer Rising, this new moon is occurring in your second astrological house of your finances, your wealth, your money, your possessions, your self-worth, self-esteem, your value, your gifts, your talents. So setting a intention, a new moon intention with regard to one of those topics, one of those life areas that this is a whole new cycle with regard to any aspect that I just mentioned, or maybe multiple aspects that I just mentioned, that this can be an upgrade, this can be an up leveling of your sense of value of your financial health, as well as how you value yourself and love yourself. This could be a whole up leveling of you feeling just like really consolidated and strong and powerful in your own energy, having it be simple, and you're just there, and you're peaceful, and connected, and clear, and inspired, that 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 is sort of what I'm getting here for this new moon in the second house. So really, really lovely. And so lots of emphasis too, and lots of like goodness that can be coming through lots of information, frankly, becoming aware of what has been really unconscious, deeply subconscious, having a taproot into the collective unconscious. So kind of for the foreseeable future, this might be that moon cycle you you start a new habit of writing down your dreams, of really listening to your dreams, because wow, so much can come through here. I mean, it's unbelievable, like infinite information, Jupiter and Gemini being energized here with Mars and Gemini in your 12th house. So really paying attention to your dreams, making sure also you're engaging in shamanic journeys, Reiki journeys, meditation, hypnosis, art therapy, you know, dark room therapy, float tanks. I mean, however you like to really just like be quiet and be still, go within drumming, music, sound baths, whatever makes you feel just like really connected and connected to yourself, connected to the divine. So much information, insights, and awareness can really come through, like the right words, the right messages. And yeah, I just can't encourage you enough to like make use of that and to value that. I think that's kind of the key word here 
is to value that that is something that you're having this whole year. So since May of this year until about June of next year, that's when Jupiter is transiting Gemini. So to definitely make use of that abundance of information you can reap from your unconscious, your soul, and the soul of the collective essentially as well here. That might be something that you're sharing. That might be something that you're offering. That might be something that you're sharing with the public or becomes part of your career, becomes part of your work. You're achieving some sort of notability or recognition or developing your career. You could have insights coming through in your dream time or meditations that has guidance, practical guidance about your career and public reputation as the North Node, the Moon is in your 10th house. The 10th house is also being emphasized by Chiron stationing retrograde in the 10th. So this can bring up wounding as regards your career, public reputation, as well as a parent or both parents. So mother father. And this is how, like with this, you can know if your 10th house is more connected to your mother or father with this station, this can kind of give you a clue as to that. If maybe something happens with mother or father, you can then know that 10th house is linked to one parent or the other. So you're always learning with astrology. That's how you learn astrology is you observe and you correlate. And Chiron in the 10th here might not be like a healing crisis with a family member. I want to be very clear about that. This can be you in the world being a healer, being recognized as a healer, sharing your gifts, sharing your teaching skills as well, being a mentor within the public sphere, within the larger community and this being a great service to many others. So that could be highlighted where you are really embodied in that healer, teacher, mentor energy as regards your career and public reputation at this time, that that is very alive, that that is very vital and revitalized for you. Mercury retrograde is occurring within your third and second astrological house. So your mind, your communications, social media, this could be writing projects, teaching projects, this could be emails and different communications you're engaged in. This can also be your mindset, your mental atmosphere being reworked, reintegrated, revised, and a lot of productive energy channeling into those life areas, as well as your finances, self-worth, self-love, your material abundance, and your right to be as powerful and peaceful and majestic and magical as you truly are. This could be a very creative and fertile time for you where you are having lots of ideas and changing any thought patterns that are blocking you from the truth of your extremely abundant, resourceful, creative, magical, true self that those thoughts need to go. They are going to burn in the fire of Leo here. And when Mercury stations direct and proceeds back forward, it's like that is going to be one fire ceremony cleansed Mercury that is ready to just manifest abundance and speak your truth and be super clear about your creative direction and any relationships with children that may be manifesting at this time that may be affecting your sense of peacefulness and to also be checking back in with your own inner child that that Mercury can help you really connect to the needs of your inner child, the voice and spirit of your inner child and allow your inner child to have that space to be the magical creator alchemist 
within your life and bring in some of those solutions that your daily ordinary mind might have disregarded or discounted. So I wish you a very magical, abundant new moon cancer. All right, so our final guidance from this amazing herbal astrology oracle card deck is these two cards here. We have number 23, Milk Thistle, the Peaceful Warrior, and this plant is of the nature of Mars and the Moon. And we also have psilocybin number 49, Commune. And it's of the nature of Pluto and Sun. So aren't these just the most beautiful cards here? Wait until you hear the descriptions. They feel so perfect. Especially this number 23 milk thistle really makes me think of the Jupiter, Mars, and Gemini combination. Let's see what you think. So milk thistle, peaceful warrior, peaceful warrior, shield, truth keeper, shelter, sanctuary, safekeeping, justice, reversed. It can mean aggressiveness harsh, impulsive, competitive, self-sabotage, overdoing it, gossip. Astrological ruler, Mars and Moon. Native to the Mediterranean, the Greek physician and botanist Dioscorides was the first to write down milk thistle's healing properties in the first century AD. Milk thistle was a remedy for diseases of melancholy, assisted in the production of breast milk, and acted as a powerful anti-inflammatory for the liver and gallbladder. Milk thistle's characteristic violet fuchsia flowers and white-veined leaves are said to embody the Virgin Mary's milk. There are many magic rituals associated with this protective flower. Traditionally, flowers were thrown into the fire to deflect lightning, and garments were woven with thistle fibers to protect the wearer from any spells. Dolls, puppets, and magical tools were often stuffed with thistle to break negative, depressive spells, melancholy, and evil hexes. In Europe, witches would make large vats of thistle to call in the spirits. A bowl of thistle tea in a room is said to revitalize energy, bring strength, and renew the spirits. Thistle was often planted in entryways to ward off thieves or parasitic energy. Milk thistle embodies the spirit of the fierce badger, as it's an aggressive healer known to rid the body of disease, poison, and toxic substances. Many Native American traditions associate badger medicine with powerful medicine women, as badgers are some of the great protectors of Earth's medicine. Badgers act quickly and efficiently in a crisis, and they do not panic. Embodying the primal warrior elements of Mars, badgers fearlessly find the means and courage to protect what's theirs, regardless of the consequences. Milk thistle also falls under the moon's rulership as it's a galactagogue, meaning it assists in milk production along with assisting the entire gastrointestinal system. Milk thistle dispels the damaging and destructive thoughts that can induce an endless loop of self-sabotage, abandon insecurity, gossip, and fear-based protection strategies that enable frustration or a false sense of growth. Do not waste your time trying to control what cannot be controlled. Like a peaceful warrior, set your boundaries firmly and fearlessly. Like badger, milk thistle shakes up systems that hinder innovation and halts patterns and behaviors that stunt growth. Know that what you are not changing, you are choosing. The protection energy and the peaceful warrior reminds me of Varuna, which our new moon is, of course, conjunct that peacefulness of Varuna, of knowing not to act, not to engage in battle. 
and also Jupiter being conjunct Regal star, Jupiter protection planet, and Regal being a protection star. So this protection, this peacefulness, especially still with the even thinking about Chiron stationing retrograde in Aries. Aries is a sign that can be aggressive in its lower frequencies. So really embodying that inner peace frequency very powerfully. Psilocybin 49 commune. Let's take a look. This one kind of even reminds me of the artwork that I created with the AI for all the slides. Isn't that interesting? And that artwork was very inspired by Leo, the lion, but also Venus is in alignment with Regulus star and Regulus is a very magical star system that I imagine the planets looking something like this, this scene in the psilocybin card that they're like mushroom and whimsical and fairy beings and magical creatures and very much out in nature. There can be unicorns and dragons and all sorts of amazing features. So psilocybin commune, upright, communing with the sacred, connecting to otherworldly energy, remote viewing, regeneration through union, coming together with a tribe, finding cosmic family, reversed, disconnection, lacking community, fear of merging with others, lack of interest in connection, soul loss, pain from the past, astrological rulers, Pluto and Sun, Mesoamerican cultures such as the Olmec, Zapotec, Maya, and Aztec have used psilocybin in rituals for over 10,000 years. The Aztec refer to psilocybin mushrooms as Tionanacatal. That might not be correct pronunciation. I apologize if it's not. Meaning flesh of the gods and Nahuatl. They believe Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent and creator deity, Place the mushrooms on earth as a gift. These sacred vision-inducing mushrooms were and are revered by indigenous peoples as a gateway to the realm of the gods and a way to receive deep spiritual insight and inspiration. When Spanish missionaries recorded these practices, they deemed the ceremonies to be devil worship. Maria Sabina, a renowned Mazatec curandera, held all-night mushroom veladas ceremonies while in deep trance state to commune with God and heal the sick. She called the mushrooms niños santos, or holy children. When she was seven years old, she discovered the magical effects of the mushrooms. She ate them and found herself in a realm of lots of children who talked to her and played with her. How Leo New Moon is that? Maria would hear a beautiful supernatural voice that would direct her healing, explain the nature of life, and teach her the language she spoke during the Veladas. Language, Mars, Jupiter, and Gemini. She called herself the interpreter, the one who reads this sacred spirit language and transcribes it for others, also the Mercury retrograde. Modern-day research shows that psilocybin produces substantial improvements in anxiety and depression symptoms increasing a sense of well-being and overall quality of life. Los Niños Santos have come to tell you that you have arrived to your place of power. They are beacons of light on earth and offer psychic healing on a collective level. Los Niños Santos are asking you to tune in and commune with the ancestors and powers that be to further develop your power Psilocybin floods our body with light codes, loosening the knots we volunteered to protect through the journey of life. Don't resist the profound teachings. Relax into the higher mind as you commune with its loving awareness. As you find home within, commune with others and experiences that support you. Connect to nature and the extensive community of energies that are lovingly there, awaiting your conscious arrival. Commune with the spirits and channel the wisdom provided with sure-footed spontaneity.
I love that. You have arrived at your place of power. And the psychic healing on a collective level feels very much like Chiron and Aries stationing retrograde. What beautiful support we have from the plant kingdom and the fungi kingdom and the animal kingdom for our human lives and our spiritual evolutionary growth journey as a collective on earth. How very beautiful all of that is. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please let me know what resonates in the comments below. And I look forward to connecting with you more in the next video. And on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com, you can find many more of my offerings and chances to connect one-on-one -on -one or in a group, distant Reiki share, a class, and I would just love to have you there and commune with you. Many blessings for a beautiful Leo new moon. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.